Good evening. I'm Pastor David Martinez of Presence of the Lord Christian Church here in Corona, California. And as you know by now, we have been ordered by the governor as well as Riverside County Health Officer to, to not hold meetings uh, or to stop holding meetings of more than 10 people. So because of this, we have been forced to cancel all of our services until at least April 30th uh, of this year. Uh, we, we're not sure when or if they will begin again on May 1st, but we're trusting the Lord for uh, just for direction and knowing that he is going to make a way where there is no way. Amen. So like you, we have had to adapt to this order and change our way of going about our daily lives, adjusting and, and adapting all the while moving forward to proclaim the good news. We thank you for tuning in today and I pray that God will continue to lead and guide and protect you through all your doings and all your life and, and your everyday um, functions, your family and your workplace. Uh, we just continue to pray for you and we covet your prayers as well. Amen. So what I want to share with you this evening has a lot to do with what's going on today with the coronavirus and the COVID-19 um, um, virus and and all the things that are going on globally I, I to be honest with you I can't quite grasp it myself because to think that something that we're experiencing next door is something that is going on in China and is going on in Spain is going on in Italy is going on around the world so this is really one of those things that um, we we have to trust the Lord with and as people it can be very difficult to latch on to things that we can't see and things that we can't feel, things that we can't touch, you know, real things, uh, tangible things. It's not real until you can really hold on to it or seek your teeth into it, you know. But I want to take you to a place this evening, uh, a place of, uh, of uncertainty, a place where Jesus experienced and the people that was around him or that were around him experienced in his time. Uh, do you remember when Jesus fed the 5,000? You remember that story? You also remember about the time where he fed 4,000. You know, those aren't two different stories. He fed, uh, he fed the multitude in two different opportunities or two different times. I'm sure he did it many more times, but these are the ones that have been recorded in Scripture. So if you have your Bibles with you, go with me to the book of John, chapter 6, and we will start in verse 22. Verse 22 reads, On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except that one which his disciples had saw, excuse me, his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, where did you come from? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Verse 28 continues, and it says, Then they said to them, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who sent him. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. I'm just going to stop there for one second. Because I want to take you back, and I just want to remind you that this is 
the next day, or this is just a couple of days after he fed 5,000 people. And they're looking for a sign. They're looking for something tangible to hold on to. They're looking for something today, not what they got yesterday, but something today. And I know, I don't know about you, but I I read this and and I'm thinking, what ingrates? But, you know, I I have to stop and think how many times I do that myself. I, I thank the Lord for the blessing and I thank the Lord for what he gives me and I thank the Lord for the healing and for the provision. And then when tomorrow comes and that same provision isn't there, you know, I'm wondering, Lord, where are you? Where, what are you going to do for me today? And so that's where they were at. And so I, I first want you to recognize that and see that they were looking for a sign from him and he had already performed a miracle, great miracle in their very presence. But much like you and much like me, sometimes we tend to forget the things that God does. In verse 30, it says, Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe? What work would you do? Our, father ate, our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that have, that have seen me and yet do not believe, All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. You know, I love the Word of God because it is always relevant. You know, what what I mean by that is that it doesn't matter the period of time. It doesn't matter the era. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter... His word is true. And what happened more than 2,000 years ago is applicable today. Today, this very day. Time changes, but he never changes. So let's, uh, let's go back and let's take a look at verse 26 once again. Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. See, the Lord promises us he will provide for our every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And, you know, for me, that that is a real amen scripture. It really is. It is a a scripture that I hold on to and, and, and I hold to myself near and dear in my life. I know he has always provided for me, always. But sometimes I don't know what I really need. And sometimes we, we lose track of the fact that he is God and, and, and we are not. See, I'm certain that I don't always know because when sometimes I get the things that I need, I tend to look for a little gift receipt to, to return it, you know, and, and, and some of you may be scratching your head or maybe laughing at that fact, but, but I know that, that there are people that are in the same boat that I'm in. You know, you call out to God and you ask him, Lord, I, I, this is what I need. And we have this picture of, of, of what we need and, and how he's going to answer. And when that, when that blessing or when that answer comes and it is in totally different form, or it doesn't seem to even be addressing our need. We look at it and we say, man, does does God really know what he's doing? Did he hear me? Does he even care? See, we get into that. 
But if we would only trust him with the fact that he knows our every need. He knows our every cry. The Bible says that he knows our heart and loves us. And you know what? He loves us in spite of our heart. If we would just trust the fact that because he's omnipotent and he's omnipresent and he is almighty God, we have to remember that he is in our tomorrow. And although that's difficult to grasp, and I understand that, if we would just trust in the fact that he is already there in our tomorrow, that the gift that he gives you, whether it's a blessing or whether it's a healing or whether it's a provision or whether it's the last bag of beans on the shelf, you know what I'm talking about. We have to trust and understand that, okay, Lord, if this is what you say I need today, I'm going to trust you with this. See, in these times, people are searching and seeking for that tangible answer that they believe they need. Whatever it may be, whether it be a mask or whether it be water or groceries or toilet paper, it doesn't matter. And, and I'm not making light of this. Understand that these are all real needs. But God knows that more than you or more than I can ever know. See, the answer is right in front of us, and, and the answer is Jesus. He even told us that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. That no man, no man comes to the Father except through him. And if we would just trust in Jesus, and, and, and I, I'm going I'm to take a bit of a tangent here just for a second, because I know that there's people out there listening, going, God, listen to this guy. We don't have this. We don't have that. We don't have this. And how am I supposed to trust in God? How, how, how am I supposed to trust in a God who is going to allow this to happen? You may have lost a family member to this virus. You, you, may, have, you may be sick yourself. You may have to self-quarantine. I, I don't know. I don't know your situation, but I know one thing. I know that my God is good, that my God is willing, and my God is able. And if you would trust on him, if you would lean on him, if you would just call out to him and believe in him, the Bible says that he has given us, everyone, a measure of faith. And I'm doing this because the Bible says that he has given us all faith the size of a mustard seed. And if you've ever seen a mustard seed, it's really difficult to look at one mustard seed in the palm of your hand. You know, you could barely tell that it's there if you went like this to it. And so when I say that if you had just the faith of a mustard seed, the Bible says that you'd be able to say to this mountain, be ye removed and cast into the midst of the sea, and it will be done. And I, and I know that sometimes we'll look at things and say, okay, God, show me and speak to this mountain and it doesn't move. But if you would speak to this mountain of unbelief, if you would speak to that mountain of sickness or of, or, or of poverty, if you would speak to this mountain and trust the Lord that it would be removed and cast into the midst of the sea, it's going to happen. My God can do everything but fail. He will not fail you if you put your trust in him. Yet sometimes I am like Thomas. I'm standing before God and I see the Lord, the resurrection Christ, the resurrected Christ in all of his glory. And yet I don't believe. I still have to stick my finger in his wound and, and in, into his side to still believe. And that's okay if that's where you're at in your walk. I don't expect you to believe as, as I do. And, and my goodness, I can't believe like some spiritual giants in my, in my life. But I want to be like them when I grow up. And you know, we need to really, if you can just, just believe. Just believe. God will show himself true. You know, today we are in unknown times and times of despair maybe but see here's the problem this is no different than 9-11 this is no different than the recessions in the 90s or in 2008 the coronavirus and COVID-19 it's no different it's no different than the holocaust or the world wars it's no different it's just the time but know this that God is still on the throne there's nothing and there's no one who can remove him from the throne. Believe that. See, during those times, I remember last year, summer of last year, we had those large earthquakes out in the desert. 
and you couldn't find a case of water or a survival kit or an earthquake kit nowhere amazon ebay you couldn't find it anywhere but if you go now they're everywhere but today what's what's the need we need toilet paper we need the essentials we need toothpaste we need water Those are the things that we need for today. But understand that those things are just fleeting. Those things will come and those things will go. But Jesus will remain. Jesus will always stay. Jesus is what we are looking for, whether we know it or not. He's the answer regardless of the question. You know, the Bible tells us in many places to hold fast. And if you're not certain or if you're not familiar with the term to hold fast, it means to hold on to something. It means to believe in something. It means, you know, I mean, if you really want to look at it in a certain way, hold fast. You're going to, don't let go. I call it white knuckling it. I call it owning it, taking possession of that. Hold fast to something. And in many places in the scripture, the Bible says to hold fast. In Hebrews 10, 23, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promises is faithful. In 1 Thessalonians 5.21, it says, But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. In Hebrews 3.6, it says, But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house are we, we are if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. We have to hold fast to this. Listen, I was always taught, whether I was in the world or not, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And today we have to stand. I invite you to come and stand on the rock that I know as Christ Jesus. The rock that has gotten me through things, through hell and high water, you you may want to say. That has gotten me from from the grave to a a life of joy and happiness. From, From the curb and the gutter to a life of provision. To a life of loneliness and despair. To a life of joy and happiness. I didn't do that. My God did it. Your God did it. So just keep in mind that if you're a sinner saved by grace, you still need Jesus. If you're a thief, if you're a drug addict, a prostitute, a drunk, you still need Jesus. And yes, if you're that person who is good and has been good all their life and has never done anything wrong like the drug addict or the liar or the gossip or the thief, You still need Jesus too, like the rest of us. So I'm going to invite you tonight. Listen, I've been telling you about this Jesus that you can trust on, and you you may have uh, met him years ago and, and have fallen away. You may be strong as ever, but let me remind you something. You need Jesus just like everyone else. If you've never known Jesus and you want to know Jesus, my Bible says that if you believe, if you confess with your mouth, if you confess your with your mouth and believe with your heart that Christ died for your sins, that you will be saved. Now, we know that in and of any prayer, a prayer does not save you, but your belief in the mighty God, in Jesus, the Savior, will indeed save you. And, and please understand, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And understand that when you open your eyes, the cupboard may still be bare. I don't know. i got a God who who's a God of miracles, he can feel that in a second while your eyes are closed. I don't know. You may be suffering from this virus or another sickness or illness. It may still be there. I, I don't know the answer to that. He does. But I know one thing. I know one thing. That my God promises that he will be closer than a brother. That he will never leave you nor forsake you. That he will walk through these times with you. He will carry you through these times. He will be your front guard. He will be your your rear guard. He will be your all in all. So if you would, close your eyes with me for a second and just this brief prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to save me. I need you, Jesus. I invite you to come into my heart and be the savior of my soul. Please forgive me of my sins. And in all the times that I have not trusted you, believed in you, wanted you, please forgive me. 
Lead me and guide me by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray. And I thank you that you have made me a son and a daughter of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, for those of you who have never prayed that prayer, but this, this evening you have, I want, to, I want to invite you. I'm so excited. I want to invite you into the fold, into a place where Jesus promises peace and comfort and hope, long-suffering, eternal life, life everlasting. You, you just, you have no idea. So welcome. My Bible tells me that for one sinner who gives his life to the Lord, that all of heaven rejoices. It's not about you, but I'm listening out for that. And for those of you who have rededicated, recommitted your life to Jesus, or for those of you who just prayed with me because you wanted to support and, and, and you believe just as much as I do, I thank you. Because the Lord has heard your prayer too. He's heard your prayer for your needs, for your cupboards, for your wallet, for your checkbook, for your bank account, for your job. The Lord has heard you. Please understand that this is just the season. And like all other seasons, this too will pass. Trust on the Lord. Amen? So we want to thank you. I want to, I want to wish you a great evening. You may look at me and say, how, how can I have this great... Listen, when Jesus is in the center, you cannot stop having a great evening. So thank the Lord. Go about your day. Please, please adhere to the orders that are out there of social distancing, of self-quarantine, if that's necessary, the stay-at-home order. Please adhere to that. Young people... Listen, you're not inevitable. You're not, I'm sorry, inevitable isn't even the word. You're not indestructible. But it is inevitable that if you continue to go out there and thinking that nothing will touch you or harm you, please understand that this virus is no respecter of person. It'll get you. It'll get you. So don't allow it to. I'm, my prayer is that you would, you would adhere to the orders and the wisdom of of all the lawmakers and especially the Lord. Okay? So we love you. We thank you so much for your time. Please continue to pray for your church. Please continue to pray for, uh, for the world and your city and your community. Um, and please continue to support your local church. Continue to give your tithe and your offerings so that when this is all over, there's actually a church to come back to. We love you so much. God bless you. Have a good evening.